Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna paint probably the most challenging lure that I ever painted before and we're gonna try to paint a Venom lure. It's gonna be really cool and we're starting right now. So where do we begin? First of all, I chose this blank because of its size. I don't want to do this project on a really small lure because it's going to be really difficult to get that detail. So I want a bigger lure because it's just going to make it easier for me. We don't want any carved in scales right now because we're going to we're going to do something very special. And those scales that would be carved in the lure, those can interfere with the layering of the epoxy that we're going to do. So a flat surface is is a very is a much easier canvas to work with right now to create this cool venom effect by using our resin. So first of all we're gonna paint our fish that is corrupted by the venom and because this looks like an European perch I'm gonna paint a European perch on this lure. Um, I'm not gonna explain all the steps because we're this video is already gonna get really really long so I'll just quickly do that. You'll see a little bit of a montage and then we get to into the real artsy stuff and the real cool stuff. And I put only one eye in because this side is going to be corrupted by the venom. And I'm not sure yet if I'm going to carve out uh, a venom-like eye. Or maybe put in the same eye but just paint it white. We'll have to see how that develops and how we're going to do it. Uh, but that's the reason why I'm not putting in an eye in here yet. Because we can always add that later. Depending on how everything is going to turn out. So now we got that done, I'm going to put one clear coat on this just to protect my paint and everything that we've done already. And then we're going to start with the venom. So now I'm going to create the actual venom that is infecting the fish and I'm going to use UV resin for that. And we need to change the consistency of this resin. This is just resin I got from Amazon, which... Uh, works really well and I'm really happy with the results of this resin, it's really strong and really easy to use. But we're gonna change the consistency and for that I'm gonna use cornstarch. I'm gonna mix that with the resin until it becomes thicker so I can actually sculpt with it so it doesn't run down anymore so I can have it exactly there where I want it. And I did some experimenting with that and as you can see the results are pretty good. I tried it on a spoon and I added some black paint to it, just some simple Vallejo black paint so that makes it black um, so we don't need to paint that afterwards, it's really easy. And then I gave it one extra coat with a little bit of resin to make it glossy again so it looks like the actual real venom because the real venom in the movies always looks kind of glossy and that makes it stand out and gives that alien feel uh, to it. Now you can also do this with regular resin um, and then you don't even need to mix cornstarch in it. You can just let it set until it becomes really thick and gooey and then you can start sculpting with it. But still you could have a risk it will run out so you have to be really careful and time it really really good. But um, you, then you really need to know your product and know when to use it and when it's gonna set and how that consistency changes over time when it's setting. So therefore UV resin is gonna be much easier because you got way more control about the drying times and where you want to put it and the consistency. Right, so now you can see that the consistency is way thicker. I can move it around and it doesn't really run down anymore 
So now I'm going to put on our first layer of resin with cornstarch and I'm just going to outline everything that needs to be black. Now that the first layer of venom is laid out, we're going to set this in our UV light box and then we're going to do the veining. Our venom has set and it's nice and hard and it's still a little bit soft there where I used more of, um, of the resin with cornstarch and that's because of the cornstarch. The cornstarch will never get solid. If you would ever go fishing with this and you're going to catch uh, duty fish they most likely will rip through this part or here because um, yeah it's it's not solid so then you know that this is just for art purposes so now we layered out the base I'm gonna try to do some veining and I'm gonna use the same stuff but this time with a little bit less cornstarch so it becomes a little bit more uh, less grainy as it is right now This is way less thick and it still runs a little bit, but that's not a problem. Um, and I'm going to use a toothpick and I'm going to draw all my veins everywhere on my lure. This is going to take a while. So now that the veining is all dried up on both sides, we're going to draw the mouth. Uh, and the reason that I'm going to draw it first is because I want to see how it's going to look and that I have a reference. And then I'm going to try to carve that out. Now because the inside of the mouth didn't really set, I'm going to put this under the light for just a few seconds so that it hardens out on the outside and then we're going to try to carve out the teeth sockets and then we're going to put in the teeth. Alright, so I realized that for the teeth this kind of mixture is not going to work because it doesn't become hard enough, it doesn't become solid especially there where I layered on a little bit more it just doesn't set well so um, the next idea I have is to mix up white paint with regular UV resin and just try to fill this up and then carve out the teeth uh, from regular resin another solution would be uh, that you use polymer clay and just bake tiny little teeth and glue those in later that would also be perfect but uh, I don't have polymer clay so I'm gonna try to do it with the things that I have which is paint and resin so let's let's give that a go see if that works So now that we carved out or did, it's time to add a little bit more depth in there and to hide the mistakes or let's say the lines that we created with our markers. So first of all, I'm going to use a black wash to create um, a shadow behind the teeth again and fill up those gaps with a little bit of black paint. Also going to wash a little bit of the body and see if that makes any difference just to create a little, a little bit of a few dark tones in black in there to create a little bit more of a realism uh, but I'm not sure if that's gonna make any difference here on the body but at the, in the mouth we need to do a black wash and then we're gonna make the teeth white again with a little bit of uh, white paint and I'm probably 
we're gonna give it a little bit of tooth flesh with a little bit of red or something. We're gonna see how we're gonna do that. But first of all, a black wash and a little bit of white paint. Now with some game color gory red, we're gonna try to paint a little bit of tooth flesh there. Now we're gonna take our black again and I'm gonna create some depth and structure in the body but also I'm gonna follow all the veins with some black paint to make them darker and more opaque. And I'm gonna dry brush a little bit of the Vallejo white on there just to highlight all those uneven cracks and crevices that we created with our resin. And it's gonna give it a little bit more depth. Also, I want the upper lip to have a little bit of a highlight so it looks more, uh, so it sticks out a little bit more. And now for the eye, I'm going to take the other eye, which is the same as this one. I'm going to sand it down just a little with a 600 grit sandpaper. This is from Vallejo. It's really useful little sanding pads, which are surprisingly long lasting as well. Now I'm quickly going to paint that eye socket black because the eye doesn't cover everything and I want everything to be black behind the eye. And as a finishing touch, I will paint this eye completely white. And if you've got nothing where the eye sticks on, a little tip that can help a lot is by using a little bit of masking tape. So you just grab yourself a piece of masking tape and you Fold it a few times so that there is a sticky side on both sides and you just place that on wherever you're going to paint your eye and now you've got something sticky where you can put your eye on. So I got some Createx Wicked White in my chamber. And now their eye is dry, we're going to place it in. Now after placing this eye in and looking a little bit at the lore and what we created, I feel like this eye is too big and it sticks out too much from um, the venom itself. So I'm going to try to remove it and we're going to place in a smaller eye. So here I got a standard eye that comes with the blank. I painted this white just like we did before. Like so that's... It's gonna be much better. So now I'm gonna mix up a new batch of that cornstarch with resin and a little bit of black paint just as we did on the body. And I'm gonna use that around the eye to work that eye inside of the venom. Just like it is on our reference pictures, it is the eye is on the inside, it's not on the outside of the venom. So that's why I need to encase this with a little bit of that stuff. ready for a clear coat.
our loader is finished and yeah, I think it looks it looks really really cool especially from the side it's just like in the picture it's just like on the poster but then in a fish form also the the structure the venom itself the veins like it's really crawling onto that lure or or on this perch in this case so yeah it, it turned out really really good one thing I would change next time is I want the mouth to be bigger and the teeth to be bigger I feel like it's uh, a too small mouth it just it's not impressive enough so I think if I would have a bigger mouth and bigger teeth maybe more teeth like it looks more vicious I think that would be better but uh, for a first attempt yeah, this lurch, I think it really, really looks cool. As always, I will leave a link in the description down below for all the materials that I used to paint this lure. If you got any questions, suggestions, or you want to share some knowledge with the lure painting community, leave them in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, have a nice day, and see you next time. Bye-bye.